Um, when we started this uh, conference, the, the concept that we looked at was a, a fast evolving technology and uh, influencing many different markets and applications. One of the challenges of inkjet is uh, you can't recruit a graduate inkjet engineer or a graduate inkjet chemist. You can get a great mechanical engineer, you can get a software guy, but they're not going to understand the industrial application and they're not going to understand inkjet as a graduate. The chances of them understanding print and image requirement, whether it's for printed electronics, 3D printing, or graphic images, they're going to have to learn. As people learn in inkjet, they continue in their main technical or scientific discipline. And what we discover is they develop their own language. Those of you who know me will know that language is one of my weak points. Uh, I do English and, and English. We discover, <laughs> a few do know me well, <laughs> um, we discover that the chemists develop their own language, the software guys their own language. We end up with very experienced engineers a few years after graduation that are speaking a language that the other engineers or chemists don't understand. And we're used to speaking within our own peer group, using these words and phrases that saves us a sentence or two of explanation, replacing a sentence with, with one word. And we're forgetting how much we know. If we've been working in graphics for many years, we can look at an image and go, it's good, it's bad. We don't realize that if you get a misregistered image, people that are not familiar with print won't see a massive misregistration, they'll tell you, hmm, maybe it's a bit blurred. So we've got this challenge of different technical scientific disciplines in different market applications, all needing to be educated and to communicate between disciplines. And this was one of the original objectives of setting up the Inkjet conference, to try and bring people together from the different scientific technical disciplines. And I think we have in the audience here a very wide range of different scientific and technical disciplines. We also have people from many different industries. And that was the other area we wanted to try and bring people together to try and look at what was happening in one industry, look at the adoption rate within that industry, and try and see what elements are relevant for adoption in another industry. If we go back, and I think you've already had presented, we've had coding and marking, we've had grand format graphics, ceramics, has been the fastest adoption and today is probably the largest inkjet market uh, of any. And we need to say, what was the trigger for adoption in these markets? What were the technical milestones that enabled this? What were the economic milestones? And the technology, the adoption of the technology is not, I believe, by the technology. The adoption is only for economic reasons. When we see a massive market growth, there may have been some technical things that we cured, but primarily it became more economically viable to print with inkjet technology than any other technology. And that's not due to the price of ink. The economic viability of inkjet may be the variable data, maybe the short print run, maybe the lack of plates, the lack of storage. There's often hidden third, fourth elements because it's non-contact. Uh, a good example of, of uh, an economic benefit is when printing uh, photovoltaic uh, cells. The substrate is very fragile. If you print with a contact method, the substrate will break. Your machine will be down for hours while you clean it, and if you leave a fragment, the next wafer through will shatter. So there's an example there of the advantage of non-contact print. Also in ceramics, it's, it's a clear benefit there. So, but it's economic that's driving this. So here at the conference, we're in our second year. Um, I think we've, we've got a great gathering of people. I'm certainly very pleased for, for everybody that's supporting us here. And we've achieved to get the different scientific disciplines and technical disciplines talking together. And we're bringing people together from different industries, stimulating ideas, stimulating innovation that I hope you take something home from your meetings here, the presentations here, and it stimulates ideas 
and business partnerships for the next evolution of Inkjet. But coming to our educational objective, we can only do so, so much with lectures, presentations. We believe we need to take a next generation, we need to develop more inkjet engineers, more inkjet chemists, and that's very difficult to do within your business. It detracts from your day-to-day -day activities, it limits the, the spread of knowledge. So together with the uh, iPrint Institute um, in Fribourg in Switzerland, uh, we've put together a five-day um, hands-on <coughs> lab-based course. Now, this is the first time I've seen the slides, um, so you'll have to excuse me, I'm going to try and uh, follow the slides rather than follow my, my speech. So it's very clear and everybody that we've spoken to in the room, we have many experts in inkjet and many of you have learned the hard way. Here we're trying to put a foundation course in, so whether somebody's coming in with knowledge on chemistry or knowledge on electronics or knowledge on mechanics, we want to raise everybody on the course to the level where they maintain their speciality, but they can communicate with the others. It's difficult as a, as a uh, if, if a project leader on Inkjet is building a, a sophisticated precision mechanical machine, a precision ink supply system, some very high technology, and he says, oh, don't do ink, you do ink, bring me some ink. If that's a limit of the communication, whether it's on a project or within a company, you're not going to get what you expected. So we're trying to raise the level so that everybody understands Inkjet, so that we've got the people developing database and automation for future generations of equipment, are really understanding what the mechanical guys are trying to do, what the chemists are trying to do, and we get a better project team and an ability to supply more knowledgeable people into the industry, enabling the growth and adoption of Inkjet. Who should attend? Well, interestingly, just about anybody. Even people that are very experienced in Inkjet, if they haven't had the opportunity of working alongside somebody in another discipline, they will remain blind to it. Uh, I have a long background in, in graphics. I've got a background in many different industries uh, in the adoption of graphics and uh, inkjet. But it wasn't until I spent a year working with an ink company that I realized just how ignorant I was. Thankfully, the, uh, the guy that I worked alongside was a rheologist. I think he was a rheologist as a hobbyist, uh, not because of his technical level, but because he was so interested in it. He took me under his wing and explained to me and lifted this veil of secrecy of the chemist. So I think even if you've got many years, there will be an area that you'll benefit from working within this group. If you're new into the industry, if you've got staff within your company and your company specializes in one technical discipline, it would be beneficial if they come and understand the full picture. I think that's covered in simple terms what I've already spoken to. Um, it's very interesting. I've come across some very, very knowledgeable people on Inkjet, people I really admire. And um, we then had the conversation about RIPs. They've not known what a RIP does. They've been so involved in analyzing the print, in, in, in working on some of the really challenging technical areas. They were talking about screening as opposed to ripping, some, some different things. So I think that there's something there again for, for everybody. Um, Hands-on is very important. You can only learn so much from somebody talking to you. Sometimes it's difficult to stay awake, even if it's interesting. Here we've got, uh, we've kind of got three of these kits. We're planning on having five of these XYZ plotters. The students work in groups of uh, three or four. On their plotter, they will be mixing a base ink formulation, measuring the physical properties of, of that ink, putting the ink onto the platform, controlling the platform 
through uh, MATLAB and G-code, uh, and actually printing onto some substrate. They'll be measuring the surface energy of the substrate. They'll be understanding why some plastics are difficult to print on. They'll be looking at the effects of pretreatment. Uh, I think we have uh, plasma pretreatment, so we can measure surface energy before and afterwards. We can jet, we can look at the difference visibly, and then we can look at the contact angle under microscopes. Again, having full access to some sophisticated laboratory equipment at the university, hands-on, will open the windows, uh, will open the vision of, of what we're doing to many people. Uh, we already have some sponsors for the course. Uh, we welcome the sponsors, we welcome industry supporting this uh, educational course, um, but we will stay independent on technologies uh, and we will open uh, all options and visibilities without any preference for one technology uh, or another. Uh, our goal is to bring more educated engineers, developers, chemists into the industry to the mutual benefit of, of uh, all those involved. Um, limited places, we'll be looking at 15 places for the course on the 2nd to the 6th of November and 15 places on the 1st to the 5th of February. On a first come, first serve basis, so you can form a queue at the back and uh, sign up for the course. At uh, this point, I will finish my presentation. Uh, I will again uh, thank uh, the supporters of the uh, Inkjet Conference, uh, both our sponsors, uh, our speakers and, and presenters, and very much our delegates. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for coming. I will pass you uh, on to our next speaker of the day, and I hope you enjoy the day. Thank you.